Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Monday, October 20th, 2014 meeting of the Lewis County Board of County Commissioners. We have a quorum. All three commissioners are present, and we will begin with the flag salute. Commissioner Schulte, please. All right. The flag salute is to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. the minutes of October 13, 2014. Second that. Motion made and seconded to approve the minutes of October 13th. Are there any questions, additions, deletions, corrections? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Have two people here for public comment. Uh, Bill Lotto. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, Bill Lotto. Um, formerly with Economic Development Council for 15 years and the last six years with Industrial Park at Transalta. Um, I um, am doing something very unusual from my perspective and that is a very uh, small number of, in fact, three different groups that I wanted to stop at and give a special thanks for all the support we've gotten from you folks over the years um, sort of as I'm getting closer to that retirement point, you start thinking back. And um, I've been in the economic development business for almost 50 years, most of it in the state, the last 20 years in Lewis County. And so I've had substantial exposure to folks in the county over that period of time. And... Um, have wanted to share with you the significant role that you and your predecessors have played and the staff folks, particularly uh, the uh, community development and, and public works folks have played in helping to make sure that there have been <clears throat> substantial numbers of good paying family wage jobs created over the years. Uh, amazing how few folks, when I'm talking to people out on the street, have no idea the role that you folks play. But in the business of economic development, and I've worked in six different counties in the state in my career, um, in the business of economic development, way too often government is seen as the opposition almost to have to be overcome before you can get good jobs into the community. Um, and I think probably part of the reason why I was blessed to spend 20-some years in this county was being able to work with folks like you and the staff people that you employ and the policies that you set up. Um, you really are to be commended. Um, you know, mentioned companies like Hardell Plywood and Cardinal Glass and our good auction folks to the south here where the role you folks played in convincing them that this would be a receptive, positive place for them to come and to set down roots was vitally important. Um, so anyway, uh, from my point of view, very unusual to be doing this kind of thing, but it probably should have been done many times over the years, and thank you very much. Thank you, Bill Lotto. Mr. Lotto. We're willing to waive that three-minute rule. <laughs> well, you know, I had actually written down two pages of comments, so I think that's okay, Bill. <laughs> Thank you, Bill, for your service. Thank you, Bill. Ron Averill. I don't think you need to give Bill encouragement. No. I expected Chris Brower to be here in Festoon and Green and Gold this morning after he told me that they had a small game with the puppies. I understand the Cougars are happy, though. <laughs> we had the University of Bayou this week. We, we trounced them. Farm Bureau had its uh, annual meeting uh, last week, and uh, I am uh, once again elected as president of the Farm Bureau for the next year. What I did come and want to talk to you about was that John Lucas, uh, who's on the Fair Commission, provided me a letter 
that was received from Kelly Frost of the Department of Agriculture and the Commodity Commission and Affairs person at the Department of Agriculture. As many of you know, the governor asked all of the uh, state agencies and departments uh, to provide a budget proposal with a 15% cut. And among the things that the Department of Agriculture plans to cut is the elimination of funding for agricultural fairs for a savings of $4 million uh, for the biennium. This is uh, of serious concern to farmers in Lewis County because the fairs are an important part of the life of our farms and, and our young folks who are getting to learn about animal husbandry uh, and, uh, and, and, by, uh, uh, and farming. Uh, and these fairs uh, provide uh, stipends to these students, uh, our, our young people, uh, who participate in the fair. So uh, I would ask that you, through the Washington Association of Counties, uh, do your best to try to, to, re to retain the funding for these activities. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm not signed up, but I have a comment reference. Uh, Colonel Averill's um, Department of Agriculture letter. I have a copy of that letter. I received it on Friday, and I will be sharing that with the board Tuesday during my update. What they're talking about is funding for the 2015 through 2017 biennium. The funds for this coming year will be released this coming March in 2015. Those are guaranteed. So we're looking at the funds for 16 and 17 mainly. Thank you. We have several uh, areas, as all of you know, that are here, uh, employee recognition this morning. And as I mentioned last week, we, we pride ourselves in, in providing opportunities for staff development in the county. And this week we have a very significant uh, uh, employee who has completed a very, as I understand, a very difficult program. And that is the program of the Association of State Flood Managers. Um, Doyle Sanford has completed his work to become a certified floodplain manager, the only one in the county that we know of. This program recognizes continuing education and professional development that enhances the knowledge and performance of local, state, federal, and private sector floodplain management professionals. The role of the nation's floodplain managers is expanding due to increases in disaster losses, the emphasis on mitigation to alleviate the cycle of damage, rebuild damage, and a recognized need for professionals to adequately address these issues. This certification program will lay the foundation for ensuring that highly qualified individuals are available to meet the challenge of breaking the damage cycle and stopping its negative drain on the nation's human, financial, and natural resources. The goals of the Association of Flood, Pan Flood Plain Managers CFM program is to formalize a procedure to recognize and provide an incentive for individuals to improve their knowledge of floodplain management concepts, to enhance individual professional development goals, to promote an understanding of relevant subject matter that is consistent nationwide, to convey new concepts and practices, and to build partnerships among organizations and agencies that share the goal of advancing sound floodplain management. To be eligible, the applicant needs to be an individual member of ASFPM at the time of application and to take and pass the examination. Doyle Sanford has received certification from the Association of State Floodplain Managers on 10 uh, October 3rd, 2014. So, Doyle, would you come on up and uh, be recognized, please? Is he here? Yes, he is. <laughs>
We were told by others in the know that the examination was not very easy, so after all, efforts to achieve that are important. Other employee recognitions this morning, we have uh, several employees who have served in the county for a number of years. We're going to recognize them at this time. And uh, so as we call your names, um, let's see, how many do this? We'll call off all the uh, five years up and then we'll uh, hand out the awards all at once and take the picture. So we'll try to speed this up as much as we can. So. Five-year award, Evan Calkins, Jeremy Manico, Matthew Trent, Danette York, and Brett Graham. Does that mean your probation period is over? What? Oh, darn it. The next group will be uh, tenure pins, and it starts with Dirk, not, well, no, it's just Dirk Haney. <laughs> Dirk, not Matt. Dan LaFrance and Donna Olson. Next set of awards is for 15-year employees. And will these people please come forward? Elaine Coleman, Human Resources. Marcy D. Coker, Public Health and Social Services. Mindy Denham, Public Health and Social Services. Robin Williams, Robin Williams. <laughs> uh, Public Health and Social Services. And Kevin Reitz, Information Technology.
Archie's picture. Oh, we're in pure trouble. <laughs> Where's your camera? It's at home. We can be in the back. <laughs> now, if you have been to diversity training, you'll get this. Just say, love or money. <laughs> I'm Marcy. <laughs> One more. All right. Oh, they're doing it. 20 years. So the following people come forward. Melanie Case, Christy Larson, Darren Sabin, Steve Skinner. Seemed like you were up here earlier. <laughs> Dual personas. And Nancy Kaiser. And then we have one 25-year pin, Jeff Pinkerton. I don't think you can get the 25-year pin till your hair goes gray. That's I don't get it. IT's 10 years is a long time in IT, and he's been there 25 years. <laughs> understands IT, but he doesn't understand spatial distribution. <laughs> somebody from IT to fix this thing. <laughs> okay, now we have some uh, quarterly awards, special awards for uh, folks who have done service to the county. Um, first of all is the Above and, Beyond, Above and Beyond Awards. And these awards are for folks who have done uh, service really outside of the realm of their normal office or, or work duties and job-related duties and they've gone over the, over the top. 
First one is uh, Mark Hamilton. Mark is an RMP3 for Public Works, volunteered, and was appointed to take on the project manager position for the Cousins Road Culvert Replacement Project, replacing a 36-inch culvert with a 7-foot by 14-foot three-sided concrete structure. Mark exceeded expectations in his ability to lead, plan, and coordinate complex and environmentally sensitive project. Aren't they all when you're dealing with the creeks? This was the first project accomplished with a project lead rather than using an area supervisor. He coordinated carefully with the survey, environmental, and engineering teams to ensure the project met expectations. He ran this job as if he was a seasoned leader rather than the department's first project manager, setting stage for the success of this program for years to come. So, Mark, would you come up and receive your above and beyond award? Here, I'm not sure. <laughs> Our second recipient of the Above and Beyond Award is Dave Jones. On July 29th, Communications Officer Marman received a 911 call from Dave Jones Area Supervisor of Public Works as he was the first individual on the scene to a vehicle accident at 100 Brim Road near the Area 5 shop where a vehicle had left the roadway and struck a pole injuring the driver. Marman stated that Dave was very calm and provided accurate information to her concerning the accident to assist her in the dispatching of the necessary agencies to render assistance. According to Mowerman, Dave spoke to the victim in a calm and understanding voice, reassuring the driver that assistance was on the way. Communications Officer Mowerman said, if I was ever in an accident, I'd want him to be the first on the scene. So above and beyond recognition to Dave Jones from Public Works. Dave? Recognition for Above and Beyond. This mic is not my friend. It is Ron Sharber. Uh, during a brainstorming session at Solid Waste, the topic of how to better handle yard waste for composting at the transfer station in Sinuhaya was discussed. Solid Waste technicians were enlisted for ideas. Available areas a concern at Solid Waste. There is not much room on the tipping floor or the recycling area to handle yard waste. Currently, customers had to lift their yard debris up and over a bulkhead quite cumbersome and deterred the public and businesses from composting. The consensus of the group was that there was no alternative to make it through the facility. Just as the brainstorming session was about to wrap up, Ron Sharver, Solid Waste Tech 2, looked out the window and said, what about that spot right down there? It was a grassy area that staff believed was unusable for use because of the requirement to remain uncovered for environmental reasons. Tim Elsie offered up the engineering department to look into the site. The site was approved for development and used for the storage of yard debris, and the rest is history. And through this process, I understand we saved over $100,000 in county funds for uh, and disposal of this stuff. So thank you, Ron. And would you come up and receive your above and beyond award?
last recipient today for a uh, above and beyond is Jennifer Ducumman. I hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> Jennifer was a 911 telecommunications dispatcher. She took on the role as a public educator for communications, which involved the Take 25 campaign, providing local youth and parents with tips to keep safe and highlighting the number of missing children in Lewis County and across the nation. Prior to Jennifer's leave on June 5th, Jennifer answered a 911 call from a man whose wife was not breathing. Jennifer calmly and professionally proceeded to coach the man through CPR and his wife. Throughout the call, Jennifer encur provided encouragement and worked to contact the people. The man requested she call for additional assistance. The gentleman providing CPR to his wife received training through his employment, and their personal story of survival is rooted in that training as well as the assistance from Jennifer and all other facets of the emergency services team who responded from Lewis County Fire District 7 and Lewis County Medic 1. Despite the added work and responsibilities of the public educator, Jennifer capably and professionally represented the best of what this profession is to offer and work quality that exceeds expectations. So, Jennifer, would you come up and receive your award? Two more awards, and these are for employees of the quarter. And the two nominees for this award are Lowell Stewart and Delane Coleman. I want you guys come forward, please, right now. We're going to get to embarrass you in front of the group. So, as they're coming forward, I'll read the information. Lowell Stewart, detention officers, worked for the Lewis County Juvenile Court for 26 years. He excels in his ability to use verbal de-escalation with incarcerated youth instead of resorting to the old way of going hands-on with an inmate. With that said, his ability in defensive tactics is impressive for a veteran of so many years. Commander Stewart is reliable, shows up to work on time, always makes a pot of coffee for his fellow staff members, <laughs> and always changes the toilet paper roll in the staff bathroom when he's changing. <laughs> And with that, he exemplifies what a professional detention officer is and deserves recognition for his work, and ethic, work ethic and duties. So, thank you. Um, Delane Coleman. Since August 2012, Delane Coleman has been working as the HR generalist for Lewis County. During this two-year period, Delane has shown great initiative to expand her knowledge and skills to aid the county in furthering its service to employees. Not only does Delane show the highest level of customer service to citizens and coworkers, she does her job exceptionally well. She's more than willing to take on additional tasks and duties, which is why she's being nominated for Employee of the Quarter. Delane has taken over the Employee Recognition Program with great enthusiasm and reworked the system to increase interest and participation. She volunteered for the historical celebration last month, giving input, making the advertisement poster, and aiding in the creation of that passport trivia game. She does these tasks with absolute interest in treating people well, and it shows in tangible ways from the crew's comments and reactions as well as from overheard public comments. Her work is outstanding and her initiative is priceless. Since Delane's arrival to the HR department, she has been always been willing to and able to pick up any additional duties or tasks that may come her way. Her talents and skills have been exceptional regardless if she's working with Lewis County employees or outside agencies, or if she's working on daily work or special projects. The warmth and sincerity is evident when she relates to those for whom she is working. Bringing her analytical talents from her previous work experience to the HR department is an asset. She is able to form duties efficiently and skillfully. It's impressive to see her motivated to expand her skills in her role as HR generalist by becoming a trainer and employment coach. So, um, Delane and Lowell, if you come up and receive your certificates for Employee of the Quarter. And then I'll make the announcement of who's the winner of Employee of the Quarter. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
And for recognition for the work in the HR department, Delane Coleman is, is awarded the award for employee of the quarter. Delane. Over the years since I've been here, we've gone through different generations of, of these awards and uh, appreciate the participation of the different departments in coming in this morning. I know sometimes it's an effort uh, on everybody's part to do that, but um, it doesn't do us much good to recognize people in the land if people show up to get recognized. So we appreciate everybody coming and, and uh, being a part of this. It's great. Okay, back to our regular scheduled. <laughs> oh, we through the room. You're all welcome to stay. I think it's really interesting. You're missing, you're missing the exciting part of the morning. Although, I don't know how the IT department's doing. We've probably got all kinds of bugs in our system now since they're all here. You know, Mr. Chair, this reminds me of a sinking ship. <laughs> <laughs> Had experience with that, Bill? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, but it was, but it was only offshore. It was only shot offshore 500 feet. Cause they... <laughs> Mr. Chair, I move to approve the notice agenda, items one and two. Resolution number 14273 through 14 TAC 274. Second. Motion made and seconded. Uh, Mr. Elsie? Good morning, Commissioners. I just want to say that when we have employee recognition like you had this morning, it just reminds me of the quality of individuals that we work with. And the awards that were given out this morning were not just for individuals that are good public employees. These are individuals that are quality employees and would be quality employees wherever they work. Now, speaking number one on your notice agenda. This is a notice of hearing regarding a new chapter to Lewis County Code regulating the operation of wheeled altering vehicles on designated county roads and rights of way. The hearing will be held on or after 10 a.m. on Monday, November 3rd, 2014, and this is resolution number 14-273. As you're aware, the state of Washington, during the 2013 second special session, amended the revised code of Washington 46.09, off-road, non-highway, and wheeled altering vehicles, allowing counties to regulate the operation of wheeled altering vehicles on designated streets, roads, or highways with a speed limit of less than 35 miles per hour. Lewis County Sheriff's Office, Public Works Department, interested individuals met to discuss usage of wheeled offering vehicles on designated Lewis County roadways. Lewis County recognizes the expanding popularity of wheeled offering vehicles and is intending to conduct a pilot program for a testing period of one year. This pilot program will use portions of, the, of Salmon Creek Road in Mossy Rock and Coons Road in Mossy Rock for use for wheeled all-terrain vehicles. If the pilot program proves successful, additional roads may be added in the future. So the hearing will be held on November 3rd, 2014 to discuss these options. Thank you. And are we gonna look at uh, passing the code change at that time on November 3rd? That's correct. The, if the ordinance passes, then it will be codified later and go yeah, be Amend Lewis County Code will be amended to reflect that. 
Good morning, Danette York, Director of Public Health and Social Services. I'm speaking to item number two, which is resolution number 14-274. This is regarding the review of a final project performance regarding the public services grant funded by the Washington Community Development Block Grant. The hearing will be held on or after 10 a.m. on November 3rd, 2014. So as you're aware, we were the recipient and the fiscal agent for the Public Services Community Development Block Grant for this past fiscal year, which ran July 1st, 2013 through June 30th, 2014. We received $93,971 and then subcontracted with the Community Action Council of Thurston Mason Lewis counties who performed the services through that the grant pays for in both Lewis and Mason County. Out of that 93,971, we retained $3,000 to cover our administrative cost. As part of the community development block grant requirements, we are supposed to hold a public hearing to notify the public of the services that were provided. And uh, this fiscal year, which started July 1st of 2014, we did receive this grant again, and in the future, we realized that at the time that we hold the public hearing to discuss receiving the next fiscal year's grant, we could actually hold the one that tells the people what we did with the previous fiscal year's funding as well. We just didn't realize that because this was our first year being the fiscal agent. So we will combine that in the future, but this is to correct that error. Thank you. Any comments? Hearing no further comments, I'll call for the vote on the notice agenda. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. I move that we approve the consent agenda items three through eight, resolution number 14275 through 280. I second that. <clears throat> Motion made and seconded to approve the consent agenda. Item number three on the consent agenda, resolution 14 275, is the approval of warrants this week. Um, a rather light week. We had 205 warrants in the amount of $1,132,354.20. Any and item number four is the resolution 14-276, which cancels a series of warrants. There are two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight warrants being canceled. Some are being voided and reissued, and some are just being voided out. I'll read those off. Uh, 607445 is the Global Protection Corporation, which is the amount of $17.43, which is being voided and reissued. 625966, Deborah Darnell, DBA Olympia Counseling, in the amount of $455, which is being voided and reissued. These are all fairly old. These are 2011 warrants. 629038, Foodliners DBA, Bailey's IGA, $414.72, which is being voided and reissued. 630687, Risk Management Alternatives, is for $43.20, is being voided. Uh, 633438, Jennifer Ducoman, is in the amount of $50.02, is being voided and reissued. Number 634408, the Alano Club, for $39, is being voided and reissued. 668687 to Shannon Hicks for $18 is being voided and reissued. And 705615 in the amount of $75.73 is being voided. That concludes item number four. Item number five, Commissioner Schulte. This resolution uh, adds $170,272 to a previous grant to the Port of Chehalis to expand their industrial rail project. Uh, additional money was needed. We do have the executive director here today, and Mr. Randy Muller, would you like to comment on that? I could. Thank you, Commissioners. Randy Mueller, Port of Chehalis, 321 Morin Road. Um, yes, the uh, project, the rail extension project, uh, will serve Conrad Industries. I think there was some press about it recently. You, you may have read um, when initially looking at the project a year ago, my predecessor 
with some of these projects, you get a you get an estimate, and then you get into it, and you find out well, it's a little more than we thought it would be. And as we got to the engineer's estimate uh, for that rail spur, uh, it did end up costing a little bit more. So there was a gap. Uh, this resolution funds that gap. So happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Morning. Thank you. Good morning, Lee Napier, Director of Community Development, speaking on agenda items 6, 7, and 8. And the first item is resolution 14-278, and this is an interlocal agreement between the county and the city of Chehalis for the purpose of cost sharing in the Chehalis River Basin flood warning system. So this contract will help, our interlocal agreement will recoup some of the costs that Lewis County bears for the flood warning system. Item number seven is resolution 14-279, which is another interlocal agreement between the county and the city of Centralia. Again, for the purpose of cost sharing for the Chehalis River Basin flood warning system. And so those are related to Lewis County's portion. And then item number eight is resolution 14-280. And this would be between Lewis County and Grace Harbor County, again, for the purpose of cost sharing, but this would cover the cost associated with um, Grace Harbor County's share of the Chehalis River Basin flood warning system. Just for the public, what exactly is involved in the flood warning system? What all does that entail? Do you want to speak about it or would you like me, Commissioner? Okay. Um, so it's a project that's been undertaken by the Flood Authority for the purpose of providing information to the public. So you can, the public can go to this site, it's an internet site, and they can look at things such as um, rain forecasts, um, flood projections, you can check the gauges. And I understand in this community people are quite aware of um, watching the gauges, so even though flood warning um, may not be predicted for certain gauges, they're able to access the information in one location and a variety of sources that help them to prepare for um, an emergency situation. May I add, Scott Betcher, who's our flood authority staffer, has been looking at all the gauges throughout the base and discovered some, discovered that some aren't working, and no, uh, we have partnerships with other entities in these flood, but these are the gauges that we are managing. West. Thank you, Lee. Thank you. Any other comments on the consent agenda? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote on the consent agenda. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Mr. Chair, I see no further business. I move we adjourn. Second. Motion made and second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. We are adjourned.